Even when you feel low, you can still go Even when you feel slow, you can still go Even when there's no hope, you can still go I never answer to no man, I still go Go, go Yo, yo, what's up, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages. It's your hostess with the mostest. It's PKR, Pastor Keenan Riley, back with another episode of People Suck, Love Them Anyways. And as always, man, I am joined by my sidekick, Nicky Nick. Nick, man, Sunday afternoon, coming out of a pretty charged up, amped up uh, church service. Uh, talk to me, man. How you feeling? I'm tired. Are you tired? <laughs> I'm always tired. I'm just, oh, man. <laughs> it's Sunday, uh, man. It's just like, whew. <laughs> it's just yeah, a lot. lot it's going just a on, deep but, breath, man. You yeah, know, it's, it was uh, nice. Though. It was nice. It was nice. I mean, it's a, uh, you know, it was a great service, man. Uh, again, very thankful for what God's doing and how he's doing it and uh, the things that he's doing. Uh, very thankful for that. Uh, it's kind of funny. Uh, I, I think it's, I, I'm thankful that, uh, our teachers are coming out of the classrooms and it's like, we got to do something, you know, uh, so there's so many kids, um, you know, that's a good thing, man. Uh, you know, whenever you have your, uh, teachers ready to, uh, you know, jump off the balcony, uh, you know, I mean, I, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I feel like you got them right where you want them, you know, right. uh, type situation. Just give but, it a couple more minutes. The kids will give in. I promise. Yeah, exactly. So uh, it's like, yeah, it's pretty cool, man. So. Uh, you know, we got a bunch of kids running around and, uh, again, we were able to do some baptisms today. Um, and we never want to, uh, you know, skip over, um, that situation. Like we said today, like preaching is fun, man, but like, uh, the, the part where you're able to engage, uh, people and, and, and watch people make a change for their lives, uh, for the, for the better. That's mm-hmm. what this thing's all about. Uh, that's what this thing's all about. So, you know, pretty jam packed day, man. And just to, uh, come in off the heels of that to be like, Hey, let's record a podcast and, uh, be excited, excitingly emotional, uh, about it. <laughs> you know? emotional. emotional, exciting, uh, emotion, emotionally yeah, excited. That too. Uh, like that. yeah, man. Uh, yeah, I'm crisscrossing. It's fine, man. I had two donuts, uh, beforehand. So, you know, it could be sugar talking too. Probably. I'm not really for sure. But, uh, anyways, we just want to say thank you again so much to everybody who continues. Uh, to hit that download button each week, who continues to listen to us, who continues to, um, you know, to, to spread the gospel, uh, whether it's here in the United States or whether it's uh, across the world. Uh, any new any new countries this week? Are we still kind of just banging banging it hard in Russia or India? Sorry, India, Russia. yeah, 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 man, yeah, we, yeah. We can't shut. I was going to say, man, we just got to, you know, yeah, India. Love yeah. you, India. Yeah, Appreciate you so much. We're, we're uh, killing it there, absolutely, and that's cool, man. Yeah. Uh, again, that's so cool to be able to do that. So. Uh, but again, thank you to everybody, man, because, uh, you know, as we continue to just sow seeds week after week, man, we know that there's going to be some good stuff, uh, that's going to come from it. Um, you know, as, as we've waited patiently, I feel like over the last seven years of this ministry, um, it's just the same way, you know, it's like, you have to be patient, you have to be consistent. I know we've talked, I know y'all get tired probably, yeah, probably of us yeah. every week talking about patience oh, and yeah, somebody done turned us off. I know. <laughs> They're like, hey, here we go. Yeah, again. Here we go. That's all these guys talk about is just consistency and patience. And it's like, I know you get tired of it, man, but, uh, um, I, you know, I, I don't think you can get too good at that stuff. You know, that's stuff that we probably need to be practicing. You can never be too consistent. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's true. Um, so I think we need to get better for sure every single day at that. But again, so thankful that, uh, you know, for the outreaches, man, for the avenues and the areas and the roads that we're filling, things like that, man. Uh, very, very thankful for that. So, uh, today, man, we, uh, you know, we, we, we talked about, uh, we called it devil drama, uh, is what we called it. Uh, I know y'all are probably like, oh my God, what did they do today in service? Yeah. You know, uh, what's happening up there at yeah, fruition? We had, a, we had a guy dressed up as Satan come yeah. up to the, the, uh, the altar and then we shot him with a toy gun. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, like, exactly. Yeah. And then we, you know, we did all kinds of stuff, yeah. man. We put him in a bag and punched him around. No, it's a good deal. A uh, good deal. But, uh, nonetheless, yeah, we, we, uh, we talked about devil drama, man. And, and, and this is for people today. I feel like that, um, that uh, and it may sound so cliche to say this, but are are experiencing a lot of drama um, in their life. But here's the deal with that: we 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 let drama in, Nick. You know, we we let drama in. Uh, you know, we choose. I feel like we choose to say yes or to no to drama. One of the two. And uh, if we say yes to it, then it's like it's going to flood our lives. And whenever it floods our lives, then. 
I mean, a thousand percent, and a lot of people might not like this, but it's like if we choose to allow it in, then we have nobody else to blame but us Mm -hmm. uh, because we have the power. We have the pen. We're writing our story. We're trusting God. And and if we are saying yes to the wrong things, it's going to cause a lot of chaos in our life. Yeah, yeah there we go. Uh, yeah, man. You're hanging me. I, yeah, no, bro. I, like, fine. if you see me like yeah. this, like, <laughs> that means I'm about to transition, bro. Yeah, about to transition yeah, over. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, though. We, you know, I think. Uh, you know, we're, we're, I don't even say we're starved for drama as much as we just hunger for it. Um, you know, I think it's just, it's what about starved for attention? Starved for, I mean, absolutely. I mean, yeah. I, I'd say, you know, mo- majority of, uh, human beings are starved for attention. They, they try to get attention somehow, some way. We all want our five seconds of fame. We all want to, you know, we, we all want to, I'm actually thinking back to a, a episode of The Office. Um, I don't know if you've gotten to this one yet or not, but yeah, uh, like basically, that's where um, I learned all my manager right. skills. By the way, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So. Well, how somehow I manage. Uh, my <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, but there, there's an episode of The Office where um, like Michael finds out some gossip and he starts spreading around a bunch of gossip around the office to to try and because he just loves being the attention. He yes, loves knowing yes, things. Yes, he loves having yes. this information and people yes. being like, "Oh my gosh, did you hear what Michael said?" Yes. Like, like you know, and, and it's just like we're we're all like that. You know, we we all want to be the center of attention. Where we tell, "Did you hear that old uh, share?" Cheryl's been struggling with her husband this week. <laughs> uh, like, <laughs> like, I thought you were going to say, I heard, have you heard Cheryl's been stripping this week? Yeah. I'm like, oh, no, yeah. I did not hear yeah, that. She's one, been struggling actually. with her husband because she's, she's been, been stripping. stripping. Yeah, 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 that could be a thing too. Uh, but yeah, you know, we're, we're just all, you know, I mean, you, you'd be you'd be lying to yourself if, if you didn't talk about somebody at church. Uh, you know, if you if you didn't find yourself in some way, especially if you were kind of, I guess, plugged in a little bit more than yeah. other people. Um, because, you know, I, I think it's very easy sometimes to be like, you know, shoot, I mean, I'm a better Christian than so-and-so because I don't do that or I do right. this. or um, it, It's something that I've I've thought before, I've said before. I mean, I, I'm as, as you always say, you know, we're preaching to ourselves here. Uh, right. like, you know, there's things that we need to get better about too. But, yeah. you know, it's 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 one of those things I feel like we, we just we want to be, uh, we want to have other people's eyes on us, other people's ears turned towards us. You know, we, we want people to, you know, we want to be that, like, the person who holds the key all the the whole you know the hot gossip and all this right, kind of stuff. Right, right. Well, to uh, you know, going back to that deal where you was talking about you know uh, talking about people in church and things like that. Like, of course, that's something that we've been battling since the beginning of time. Um, and you know, really reading through the Bible before I knew a lot about the Bible, and I still don't know a lot, but I know enough. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, I mean, I continue to learn every day. Uh, but what I learned before I started reading the Bible, I would always hear you know Paul uh, wrote two thirds of the New Testament and. That would always amaze me uh, because I'm like, you know, here's this guy persecuted Christians and all this good stuff, and now he's writing two-thirds of the Bible. And really, though, uh, and this is not to take anything away, I feel like, from what Paul done, writing two-thirds of the Bible is, or the New Testament is truly amazing uh, in itself. But, like, the question becomes, why did mm-hmm. he write two-thirds of the New Testament? Why, why did he? You know, and, and here's the deal. He wrote it because he was writing letters to these churches— that that he had planted or visited or whatever, and after he had left, he was writing letters back to the churches because they started acting fools after mm-hmm. he left. And so, you know, Paul is writing two-thirds of the New Testament because he's reaching out while he's in prison or in other places or whatever, you know, and he's like, hey, look, uh, you know, whenever we planted you or whenever you started, you were in sound doctrine, doing the right thing, in relationship and covenant with Jesus, you know, you were following these guidelines and you were doing great. What happens? Well, what happens is, is that a crew of people or a few people come in and start trying to lead people back, uh, to the old way, you know, to the, to the old religious type setting. And it would cause what? It would Mm -hmm. cause drama in the church, which is what we talked about today. It causes drama in the church. And, and so you had this church who was, you know, thriving and doing good and growing. And then all of a sudden, uh, guess what happens? There's a little bit of drama. And now Paul's writing letters to everybody because it seems like it was the theme uh, throughout the New Testament. You know, uh, whether it was Philippians, whether it was uh, 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 going blank, Colossians. whether Yeah, yeah, right. Uh, Yeah, uh, the the church at Thessalonica, you know. Uh, But, uh, you know, things like that. Like, it was, you have these different places that Paul is pinning these letters to, and it's truly because people Mm -hmm. are people. And 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 people people suck. People suck. Name drop, here we are. (laughs) But it's, but, you know, it's people, people are being people. Church, we need people in church, uh, you know, to because that's what the church is. The church is the people, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, and so we need people, but w- like what we talked about today, it's it's always the enemy 
who is not worried about the world. Uh, because, by the way, I don't care if you're listening to this in Bangladesh or India or anywhere else. Like, y'all know that the world is falling apart, you know. Uh, so the enemy is not worried about the world. The enemy is focused on the church and the church people and the Christians. And if he can cause enough chaos, you know, in that area, then, again, a divided church is not going to heal a broken world. Mm -hmm. We know that. We're seeing that play out right now. Uh, and so for me, uh, I don't know why I said this today. I don't know why we get so, um, what's the word I'm looking for? We get surprised, shocked, whatever you want to throw in there, by, like, the enemy's tactics and his antics. But he's been doing it forever. He's been doing it forever. Mm -hmm. And he's, he's coming after God's people. He doesn't care about people that aren't following God. He doesn't care about people that aren't doing anything for God. He doesn't care about people who are literally out there causing the world to be a bad place. That's the, that's the furthest thing from his mind. He's coming after the people of God who are trying to do better, live better, and be better mm -hmm. through God. You know, and that's where that's where the drama begins to happen at. Yeah, I mean, he's he's been coming after. Um, I, I, as I kind of talk to the the youth about it, we're going through the Bible right now, um, from you know like Genesis onward. We're at we're in Exodus, and I you know I've been talking about you know how God, you know, starting with Adam and Eve, had created this set apart. I, I say generation, but like it's just a set apart people. Um, you know, and ever since the beginning, ever since God set these people apart, marked these people as special, so that you know these were His chosen people. Ever since He did that, these you know the enemy has been coming after them. Yeah, um, you know, I mean, in the Garden of Eden, you know, right. you know, Adam and Eve were the first set apart people. Yeah. There were other people in the world at that time, yeah. but Adam and Eve were the set apart people. They were set apart in the garden, you know, for a, a plan and a purpose. God's perfect vision for humanity mm -hmm. was in that garden. Mm -hmm. uh, but then the enemy came in and he messed things up. You know, he convinced uh, Eve to eat the fruit, and then you know Adam was standing by watching, and he ate the fruit as well. Um, you know, and then we, we we see you know sin start to enter, we see shame start to enter, we see all these things start to enter the world. Um, and then as we see time and, and you know things progress, you know Cain and Abel, the enemy was again trying to attack that chosen those chosen people by separating by you know Cain killing Abel, um, you know, and then you see it you know time and time again, you know you see all these all the different Bible stories is following, uh, you know this chosen set apart generation that you know follows from the beginning all the way down into Jesus, yeah. um, and then we see Jesus' disciples and you know eventually spreading out into the world, and you know the Christians are the set apart people now, and you know we're being chosen to to be better and be different than the world, but again we see the enemy constantly causing issues. And drama and messing with things and doing things like you know all the all the letters that Paul wrote um, was saying you know hey don't worship you know don't follow Apollos if he's teaching the wrong thing you know hey these these women in this church are teaching the wrong thing don't follow them you know there's all this drama all this confusion you know hey get circumcised hey don't get circumcised hey yeah. okay, hey don't eat this hey eat that you know all these different things that are going on um, are just people stirring up drama because the enemy is whispering in their ear and right. leading them in a wrong direction yeah and that's what like I mean you know our examples kind of bounced around all over the place today but Adam and Eve was was kind of where we would keep falling back to uh and and that's simply because everything that we talked about today which we talked about the three d's we talked about uh distraction we talked about distance and we talked about destruction and it really lines up in that order uh you know the enemy is going to is going to introduce a distraction into your life what is that distraction you know what is the distraction that is keeping you from god's plan in your life what is it uh you know, you could list a thousand things, and I mean, there is um, there there is a lot of things. I just had a buddy text me like uh, right after service, and he's like, "Did you just mention Pornhub today on uh, on your live stream?" Yeah, and free I was advertising. like, "Free advertising, yeah. by the way." Um, you know, and I was like, "Yeah, actually, I did," um, because the distraction is again is that we have the Bible on our phones, but we also have access to every amount of sin that we could ever think or imagine. Mm -hmm. Gambling, you know, it's not just Pornhub. You know, yeah, you, you're right. You can right. get on Draft. Kings and you yeah. know, spend your entire tax return on that and you know, that you should have used for you know debt or you know yeah, whatever else it right, could have been right um you know just ordering food on doordash because you're too lazy to go anywhere and get anything you order yeah. you know three meals just for yourself that's a scam uh, by the way it is bro. a scam doordash is 100 a scam yeah. i'm going against that right now straight story really quick man i know this has nothing to do with anything <laughs> but i gotta tell it uh i was considering because i was at work the other night i was considering getting doordash so I looked on DoorDash and I went to Zaxby's and I was like, man, I'll tell you what, a uh, chicken salad sounds amazing. You know, fried chicken salad. Got on there, ordered it, looked at it, and it said fifteen ninety nine. And I said, there is no way that is not right. So I get on Zaxby's original menu, it's ten ninety nine. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, what the heck? Like 
No wonder, man. Like, get me on DoorDash. You right, know what I'm yeah. saying? Like, help me out, man. If that y'all is would just insane. start tipping, <laughs> yeah. then they wouldn't have to overcharge oh, everybody. Oh, my gosh, man. So you know what I did? I took my break. I went to Zach's right. and I got my own food. Yeah, just It's crazy how much more we're willing to spend, how much more we're willing for to convenience. give just for convenience. For tip. convenience, exactly. man. For convenience. It's crazy. Um, but, you know, going back to what we were Sorry, talking about. Sorry. I had to get that uh, off yeah, my chest. Just moving that, uh, that ADHD train to yeah. the right direction. Yeah. Um, but, you know, again, just, you know, there's, there's so much at your fingertips using your phone, you know. You, yeah. you have the ability to, to see and do not only in good things, but to also partake in sin. You can text a friend and check on them, or you can text a friend and friend and cuss them out. Yep. Like I mean, they're, they're, again, it's just like I mean, this is a tool. Uh, you know, this phone. I'm pointing to it if you're not watching, but like this phone, this is it. A, is it a tool? Yeah. Uh, you know, like you can use it for the right reasons or the wrong reasons. But there are a lot of distractions on there. You know, I catch myself sometimes. You know, I'll be reading. Uh, you know, if I'm reading the book or reading a book or reading the Bible or anything like that. You know, how quick and easy it is for me to just reach over, pull my phone up in between chapters. Yeah. Um, you know, or something like that and to look and then I get lost right. uh, you know there's so many times that I'll be distracted by something on there and, and forget what I got on my phone for in the first place right uh, or forget to do something important that I meant to do on my phone in the first place there's just so many distractions on that device and that's why you know I, I think you talked about it a long time ago even on I think it was a Wednesday night um, you know just about how important it is to have like an actual physical Bible uh, yeah. you know to, to dig into because it cuts down on the distractions of you know you, you could put do not disturb on your phone you know where you're not getting the notifications and all that but it doesn't mean you're not going to be tempted to look at something look. else. Yeah. You know, you're reading the Bible and then you're reminded of something and then that, that leads you to Facebook and then Facebook leads you to YouTube right. and YouTube leads you to TikTok. And t- you know, it just goes down this rabbit hole and then the next thing you know, you've wasted 30 minutes and you're like, I never have time to read my Bible. Well, you did. <laughs> you yeah. just wasted yeah. that time that yeah. you had. Yeah, it's true, man. And like, it's... Uh we, distractions are at our fingertips, you know, and, and it's like no matter what it is, it could be the phone or, you know, it could be whatever. Again, we, we place it before God, it becomes sin. All right. I mean, like that's that's point blank. Um, that's not me. That's not pastor. That's the Bible. You know, place no other gods before him, uh, you know, and so. We talk about things like that, but it's like, what is the enemy wants to introduce distraction to lead you away from God's plan and to put something in front of God? So, you know, with Adam and Eve, like God, God references Adam and Eve and he says, look, he says, you can have all of this. This is all yours. You are, you are to reign over this. Just don't eat this fruit. Don't touch this tree. That's all I ask. The enemy's tactics is to literally say, yeah, that sounds good, whatever, but how good does this sound? You know, mm-hmm. you eat this fruit, you're on God's level now. That sounds pretty cool, right? And for us to understand this, like, the enemy will dress up sin, make sin sound cool, make it look good, make it feel good, whatever, until you commit it. And then after you commit it, it makes you feel so worthless. It makes mm-hmm. you feel so devalued. It makes you feel, as we said today, you know, this was the first time after after they partake, uh, partook, partook, partake. No, after they after they ate. There we go. After they <laughs> ate the after they ate the fruit, what happened? That was the what was that? I have no idea. Was that, that you? Was, I, was think, that, I think it was my stomach. Was that, that your stomach, funny. bro? I thought that was a small cat under the table, <laughs> bro. I was about to be. I was like, what, what the <laughs> yeah, heck is that? Yeah. There's a demon in here. Yeah, yeah like we're about to cast out some yeah. stuff. Uh, but anyways, um, so you you see for the first time that, and again, Adam and Eve had been naked up until mm-hmm. this point. It's not like they made clothes, you know, and whatever, but. It wasn't until they ate the fruit that then they had this this realization that now they were looking at each other for the first time. Watch this. Not as how God seen them, but as how they would see each other mm-hmm. in the physical, not the spiritual anymore. But now they're in the physical. And we understand from, from reading the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, operating in the physical is never the right thing to do. Um, and so for that, man, that's that's where, again, that distraction sounded really good until they done it. And mm-hmm. then after they done it, there's this emptiness, there's this brokenness, there's this there's this shamefulness. And that's what the enemy wants us to do. He wants us to feel empty, broken and ashamed mm-hmm. for what we've done, for who for for how we've acted. And I, I think honestly, like we should, it's called conviction, right? If we do something wrong, it's called conviction. We should feel ashamed of it, but we shouldn't let that shame dictate uh, you know, our relationship. Uh, that's that's why Jesus died for right to have that alleyway or that avenue back to forgiveness and grace and love and mercy. Um, but where where we see it as is is that we it was first a distraction, but then distraction causes distance. 
because we do feel ashamed. And often, and this is what people deal with. Like, this is normal church stuff that people deal with that, you know, you get into church and you're doing all right, but then the enemy distracts you. And then mm-hmm. you got some drama going on in your life. And now you're ashamed because maybe you said something or done something wrong. And, and now you're ashamed about it. So what is your, what is your resolution? Mm-hmm. Oh, I'm just going to stop going to church. So that way I don't have to face my shame. Mm-hmm. Or that way I don't have to face people. Or that way I don't have to face. And so what was Adam and Eve's shame? Or, 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 you know, their shame was, hey, I ate this apple, or, you know, I done this, and now what happened? So now they hide from God. Mm -hmm. They hide from God. And for me, like, that's where we, we as church people, we're still, like, (laughs) we're still stuck in the same cycle, man. Years and years and years and years and years later, we're still doing the same thing. Isn't it crazy? Mm -hmm. I know the Bible says there's nothing new under the sun. I get it. I understand that. But, like, you think at some point in time, Nick, we would have to wake up and be like, all right, this happened back in Genesis. Um, you know, it's been a couple years. You know, we've seen a couple new years since then, right? Um, pretty sure Dick Clark was still alive for the first one all the way up to about the last three, I think. I don't know. Uh, but anyways, uh, like, like we've seen this trend. We've been a part of this trend. Why do we keep repeating this trend? Yeah, I mean, I think it's just, you know, we, we talk so I, – I think the biggest example or the biggest thing there would be that we just – we discount the power of the flesh or the power of sin, the power of temptation. You know, we, we like to think that we're stronger than we are um, or, or something along those lines where it's just, you know, like, hey, I would never fall for that. You know, I think we get we get guilty of, you know, oh, I would never, you know, fall for that. I would never, you know, cheat on my spouse or I would never get drunk or I would never do this. But what about this? And I think that's where, you know, you know, the enemy, Satan, you know, his demons, they're so crafty because they can get inside of you and see what you struggle with, you know, individually. And, you know, they're going to attack you at that point. You know, they're, they're going to know that you struggle with lust. So, you know, they're going to tempt you with that. They're going to, you know, they're not going to tempt you with drinking. They're not going to tempt you with gambling. They're not right. going to tempt you They're You know, you're going to be tempted to act on what you struggle with, yeah. you know, where your flesh is the, or where your spirit is the weakest, I guess, in that moment where, you know, Hey, I can, I, can, I have a harder time saying no to this. I can say no to that, no problem. But when I when I, when I'm faced with this, it's difficult. Yeah. I have to fight with this. I have to fight against this. Yeah. Um, you know, and I think it's just one of those things that you know we we may think that we're strong in some areas, and so we lie to ourselves and say we're strong in all areas. But then when that moment comes around, when we're when we're scrolling through TikTok and that inappropriate video pops up. You know, where we're, we would tell ourselves, oh, I would swipe past that, but then you, you stop and you hesitate for a second. Yeah. Uh, or, you know, like when you're like, at a party and everybody's drinking, you're like, oh, I'm, I'm never going to drink again. And then you, you know, this, this, uh, girl or guy that you, you're attracted to at work is over there drinking and they want you to drink. And then you're tempted. You're like, well, you know what? You know, is workplace doing romance still a thing? I don't know. I mean, it's, it's not legal in some places, <laughs> but it depends on if you're, uh, if you're a boss on a subordinate or, oh, uh, man. whatever that may be. That's a whole other episode. Yeah, a whole other. But, um, you know, I, what I'm just trying to say is that, you know, you may think you're strong in all areas. You may think you're, you know, the, the big cheese and all that kind of stuff. But again, when you're faced with that, that thing that that makes you tick, uh, that that one small thing, you know, that that causes you to stumble. Uh, when when Satan and the enemy comes at you with that full force, or even just a small little, you know, it, it's so easy for us to fall back into it. Yeah. Um. You know, it's something you know, like if you struggle with you know, uh, porn addiction for years, and you know, you're watching you know a movie and the love scene comes on, it's going to tempt you. You know, it, it, if you're struggle with alcoholism for years, you drive past a uh, you know a bar one night and there's a lot of people there and it looks fun, the music is playing, you know, you may be tempted to go into that bar that night. Yeah. Um, if you're somebody who's trying to lose weight and you drop past the donut shop and you smell that donut every single morning, you're going to be tempted to stop and get some donuts. Um, but again, we're, we all struggle with those individual things. And just because you don't struggle with a lot of things doesn't mean you don't struggle with anything. Um, and I think we need to make sure that we're strong. You know, we're, we need to work on practicing strength and saying no to those temptations. And um, like I'm actually reading a book right now called uh, Think Ahead mm-hmm. um, by Craig Grishel. He just came out with it a couple weeks ago. But he was talking about thinking ahead, which means planning ahead, basically. Right. Um, you know, making decisions ahead of time before you have to make them, you know, to say, I'm never going to drive past a bar. Plan out your route, um, you know, on the way to work and figure out if where the bars are and make sure you avoid them. Um, right. You know, make sure you put blocks on your, your TikTok, your phones, your whatever, to make sure you don't see adult content. Yeah. Um, make sure, you know, like he, he said that to make sure he never has a, you know, never cheats on his spouse or anything like that. He said, if he wants to purchase an app, somebody else has to pay for it for him. Like he, his own password won't work. It's somebody else's password he has to enter. Uh, like he has to give his phone physically to somebody else and have them enter the password before he can download an app. Um, you know, and he, he has those things like covenant eyes, 
you know, to help block and protect against things. He said he tried typing in hot air balloon once and his search engine blocked it because it had the word hot in it. <laughs> like, you know, there, there's things you can do, though, you know, to, to prevent, your, you know, to, to fight those temptations before right. they even come your way. Right. I think it's about, like you said, like putting yourself in that position. Mm-hmm. Uh, and um, as I was even talking to a lady today after church, um, you know, I told her, I said, true love is honestly about saying no as much as what it is about saying yes. And uh, I said, you know, to me, I think we we get caught up in saying yes because we want to make people happy. And and we think that saying yes will make people happy. And it will to a certain point, to a certain time, to a certain moment. But whenever that moment, time, and place wears off, then they're going to want you to say yes again Mm -hmm. and say yes again and say yes again. And again, we stay stuck in those cycles back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, because we keep saying yes, hoping it'll get better. But yes is not always the answer. Sometimes true love is saying no. Mm -hmm. You know, hey, no, you need to slow your roll. You need to step back. You need to take a moment. You need to take a break, whatever the case is. Um, and, and so this, this distraction leads into distance. It leads into distance from, from God. It leads into distance from church. It leads into distance from good people. It leads into, into distance, man, because now you're packing this sin and you're packing this shame and you're packing all of this stuff that you failed at. And that's what the enemy wants you to do. He wants you to be on the sidelines. He wants you to be out of the game. He wants you to be disconnected. Uh, because at that moment, it, it, it is now him against you. It's no longer you and God. It's no longer, not, not, not that God has left you, but it's the fact of that you're not depending upon God anymore because you're so ashamed of what you've done. And, and we've seen that in Adam and Eve. Like, they hid. Uh, and, and now you got this thing where it leads into the last D called destruction because that is what the enemy wants. The enemy wants the church to fail. You know, even though when Jesus looked at Peter, he said, on you, I will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. We have that promise from Jesus that the church will not fail, that Jesus is coming back for his church. He's coming back for his bride. So we have that promise. But the problem is, is that we get so distracted by the problems that we stop believing in the promise. And we're in this 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 cycle, and and because we're in this cycle of of distraction and distance, and now it leads into destruction, not destruction of the church, but destruction of people inside of the church, and destruction of people inside of the church. You know, the the, the Bible talks about unity, it talks about being in one mind and one accord. It talks about it compares us to a uh, a human body. And, and all of this good stuff, but for us, we, we can't see the blessings and, and the breakthroughs and the miracles and stuff like that until we all come together as one in this unified body where we can see God work and move. How is that possible? Well, it starts by what Jesus said to his disciples. You will be known by the love you have for me and the love you have for other people. And we've got too many people sitting in churches today that love themselves, love their families, love, say, let me say this, they say they love God, but they don't love people. They don't love the other people around them. And to me, that's where this little bitty distraction starts. Because I don't know if you know this or not, but churches... And, and and we've even been talked about for this, you know, about cliques. There's cliques in the churches, you know, and um, I tell people all the time, I'm like, if you want to talk to me, all you got to do is come up and engage me. You know, like, uh, I don't know where where a clique comes from or, or uh, we, we talk about comfort a lot. Um, where people are comfortable talking to certain people. Uh, I like it today where we were able to, uh, you know, where the praise team, uh, you know, and Tara was like, hey, get up out of your seats and go talk to somebody. Go shake a hand, you know. Let's get uncomfortable. Let's talk a little bit. Um, That is how you grow in unity. That's how you grow in love. That is how you step outside of your comfort zone. Uh, But there's, to me, there's too many churches, there's too many places, there's too many houses of worship, whatever you want to call it, uh, in today's society where it's like we allow the enemy to come in in these small cracks and these small moments and start distraction. Now, whether that is, whether that is, uh, um, I don't know, a he said, she said scenario whether that is a rumor that started about somebody in the church, whether whatever the case is, you know, we, we allow the enemy to come in and he starts the distraction. 
And we as church people are not, I don't know if we're not skilled. I don't know if we don't know enough of the Bible. I don't know uh, if we, it, we don't know how to handle conflict according to the Bible. I'll talk about that in a second, but we, we don't know how to handle conflict, I feel like. And so for us, it's a distraction. And it's like, well, I can't, I can't do that anymore. I can't go there anymore. I can't be a part of that anymore. And then comes the distance. And what the problem becomes is, is that we never identify, talk about, or fix what's going on in that person's life. Not me, not you, but the person that, that had the problem. Mm. You know, it's not, so let me say, I know I've been talking a lot. I'm sorry. That's no, fine. Uh, yeah, yeah, just nod your head, agree with yeah. me. But so we, we have a huge problem of, of pointing fingers but not back towards us. Mm-hmm. You know, we, you've always heard the, the saying, you know, once you point one finger, you got three or four point back at you. Depends on how many fingers you got, I guess, mm-hmm. you know. I mean, do you count a pinky as a finger uh, or a thumb as a finger? Th- the thumb, no, <laughs> like, no. And that's what, like, if I do this, I guess the thumb points that way with the finger. I don't know. Kinda, yeah, yeah, so, but but we, we don't. So, for us, man, it's like as soon as something happens that we don't like within the confines of a church, all right, we, we allow that to become a distraction to the point where we start allowing it to distance ourselves from the church, from the actual church. And then it causes a destruction because no matter where you go to, no matter what church you go to after that, you've not addressed what happened mm-hmm. at the previous place. Um, and this is a thousand percent honesty with me being as real and as transparent. I have been in churches other than fruition church. I feel like most people have been to at least two churches in their life. You only been to one fantastic, whatever. I'm not as holy as you. Um, but you know, I've been to other churches. Have I experienced church hurt in other places? Absolutely. Uh, have I experienced church hurt in fruition church? Absolutely. Um, that's part of ministry. You know, people are people. People aren't always going to be the best to you. I get it. I understand it a thousand percent. Where I've had to really grow mature, uh, maturity-wise is the fact of that, that I can't allow a previous season that hurt me to bring forth uh, hurt in, a, in another season. Or you know what I'm saying? Or to prevent healing in another season. Or to season. prevent healing. Yeah, I think that's a better way to say it. You know, I can't allow hurt in a previous season to prevent healing in the next season. Mm-hmm. And to me, there's so many people dramatically walking around uh, in churches that are just like that had something happen to them six months ago, a year ago, whatever, and they don't know how to. I, I don't know if it's the fact that they don't know how to deal with it. They don't know they they don't want to deal with it. I don't know if they carry the burden because it makes them feel like a victim, which makes them feel justified for the way that they feel. Like you're all about that psychological stuff more than what I am. You you watch Criminal Minds and stuff. But, uh, <laughs> I'm an expert. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm an expert. Uh, yeah. Uh, so you know, I don't know if that's the case or not. Uh, I know there's a lot more that I want to say. I'll let you you know kind of kind of chime in here. Uh, but uh, you know that that to me is like something that I think everybody deals with. But we as mature Christians have to learn how to get past that yeah, how to get past the drama yeah, absolutely i mean we, we we get so stuck and, and bogged down and in, in these just some small simple things and i mean again that's how the enemy works though i mean like you know you you take one thing out of context that somebody else said referring you or mentioning you and you know then you decide you know i don't want to be around that person so you leave the church and then you know then satan's like you know hey you're gonna find people like that everywhere there ain't no point in going to church anymore absolutely There's hypocrites everywhere in church you know yeah. people are gonna you know judge you and say and so then now not now you know you were distracted by what this person possibly yeah. said about you you. You've now been distanced from church, and now you know the enemy is going to destroy you while you're sitting there all alone, thinking that nobody's going to care about you, nobody's going to help you, and nobody's going to be there for you. Well, that's the lie. I feel like that mm-hmm. we that everybody settles for, and, mm-hmm. and maybe it's just the convenience of it, the comfortableness of it. But people settle for that lie. Oh well, there's people like that everywhere you go, so mm-hmm. you might as well just not go. Well, yeah, newsflash. They're at Walmart. They're at Target. They're at the gas station. They're at the grocery store. They're mm-hmm. they're at your favorite shopping centers. They're at your concerts. They're at everywhere. Like you're going to have people that you don't mesh with, no matter where you are. So why should we settle for the lie that it's like, oh, everybody in church is like that, so I just won't go. Mm-hmm. You know, like yeah, it's I crazy. I mean, I mean, you know, I mean, you and I both know. I mean, just in the, you know the almost four years that I've been here, you know, I mean, we've had button heads with people. You know, we've had people leave, we've had people come, but you know, we've we've had issues, but we've tried to work on them. We've you know, we prayed about it, we've forgiven, we've moved on, we've you know, and and I would like to say that we've grown stronger as a result of those things. Uh, but you know, a lot of times that we you know we just we have that one thing that hits us, and we're yeah. not strong enough spiritually to to handle that, and we allow that season to prevent us from you know, as we just said, healing in the 
next season. Right. Um, you know, we don't allow that next season to even come because we distance ourselves yeah. from from the possibility of that happening. Yeah. Um, and we, we have to get better about, um, you know, as I mean, really, as the Bible says, turning the other cheek. Uh, right. You know, when something happens that you don't necessarily agree with, as long as it's not something absolutely insane, you know, like if somebody talked bad about you, if somebody said something bad about you, you know, we have to get better about you know, letting go of the drama. Uh, right. Because, you know, that when, once you let go of the drama, then it doesn't control you anymore. Yeah, one thing that uh, I wrote down in my notes that I didn't really talk about today, I'm lying, I don't do notes, uh, but one thing, <laughs> one thing that... Uh, that the spirit really spoke to me about. Uh, I think I was. I, don't know, I think I was driving somewhere, but I can't remember. Uh, but was the simple fact of that. Oftentimes, we want to step out of seasons that God's not ready to bring to an end yet. Mm-hmm because of hurt or discomfort or whatever. And so for us, we'll step out of seasons that God's not ready to shut down yet. Mm-hmm. And that's disobedience. And, but, and, and, and what I wanted to talk about today, but I really didn't get a point to is that, is that, is that, uh, disobedience is caused by and driven by drama and vice versa. You know, drama can bred disobedience, but disobedience can have a lot of drama mm-hmm. attached to it as well. Go ahead. Yeah, no, I, like as you were saying, I was reminded. I was actually, I was thinking about this towards the beginning when we were talking. But um, you know, it, it kind of hit me as you were talking earlier about Adam and Eve, and you know, it, it's we, we oftentimes contribute the you know when they ate the fruit, yeah. um, like that was the, the 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 dividing factor. Like at that moment, once they once that fruit touched their lips, you know, sin entered the world and everything. Um, but like you know, part of me wants to think that it di- it didn't necessarily start at that moment, but it started before that when they made the decision to eat the fruit. Well, yeah, I mean, it's uh, always like, a yeah, decision. It's just the, yeah. I think that that decision that that you know, okay, I'm going to let this do something or I'm going to let this take up room in my head rent free, you know, right. all these sorts of things. When you make that decision to, you know, I'm not going to go there anymore or I'm not going to talk to that person anymore or I, you know, this person did this, you know, I heard one thing about them and now I'm going to make, I'm going to make the decision that that's the kind of person that they are. Um, like once you've made that decision, you may not even have to say anything out loud. You may not have to take physical steps into something. Um, but I think it's like once yeah. that, once that decision happens is when that disobedience happens. Yeah. Um, you know, it wasn't necessarily the eating of the fruit. It was the decision to eat the fruit. Right. Like once they made up their minds, like, okay, yeah, I'll listen to this satan instead of god that was where that disobedience started yeah you know once you allow yourself once you allow your thoughts and that's why the bible says we have to take our thoughts captive yeah we have the ability to do so and we need to do that you know when those thoughts are creeping in hey look at this video hey uh, this is what that person says when when you feel that that pull to to get into the drama to get into the mess to fall backwards you know you have to take those thoughts captive yeah you say lord rebuke you satan i mean you know there's times in the bible that jesus said that peter said that you know like you have to be able to do that one thing i feel like that we should just do I mean, and like, this is just me being real is that we have to grow up mm-hmm. like we, we have, oh, absolutely. you know, the, the, the Bible says that, you know, as we were children, we thought like children, we, we, you know, we had childish thoughts, but it, you know, as we grow into adults, we put away the childish things. And as children, we never understood how to deal with conflict. Mm-hmm. Uh, we never understood how to face our, uh, face people that hurt us or face people like we, 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 we couldn't process it. And, and that's. I mean, that's no slight against anybody because we're children. You know, we were children, so we didn't understand. But as adults, and and this is spiritually speaking, uh, running, you know, line in line with this is, is the fact of as adults and as, and as spiritually being adults, uh, we, we are supposed to learn through the Bible how to deal, how to handle with conflict. Um, you know, as the Bible states, if you have a problem with your brother or sister, the Bible says to go to your brother and sister. Well, we skip that part. Mm -hmm. You know, the Bible says that if something is not resolved between you, go back to that brother and sister again and then take it with a witness the next time around. So now we're following step number two with taking somebody there to have a conversation. Then the Bible says if nothing is, 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 is happening, then you have a meeting, you form a meeting with the church and with the, with the situation with the pastor at that point. And this is, again, this is just me dealing in ministry for over, I don't know, 15 plus years now. People skip all of those steps. Mm-hmm. And, and who do they come to? They come to me. Mm-hmm. They come to me. Well, this one said this, and this one done this, and this one was about this, and this one was here, and this one was that. And it's like, okay, 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 okay. But if you ask the question, did you go to that person first? Did you have a conversation with that? Absolutely not. Were, yeah, I didn't want to yeah, talk to were, them. Like, were you, yeah, were you able mm-hmm. to put aside your, your frustration, your anger, your feelings? Was that person able to put aside their frustration, their anger, their feelings? Was you able to do all of that and, and be like, hey, mm-hmm. 
I've got a problem. You know, we're going to talk about it. And, and even if I don't get the desired answer, first off, I've gotten some stuff off my chest, so I'm not going to feel as angry as frustrated. You know, at least you know how I feel mm-hmm. at this point. And if I didn't get the desired answer, let's take some time. Let's step back. Let's pray about it. Then I may bring another person back. Kind of maybe, maybe you'll have two people's opinions now. If it doesn't work, okay. Well, now I'm going to go talk to the pastor at such and such. And it's like, we, uh, to me, man, we, we are so afraid of of just having a conversation. And mm-hmm. I'm not talking about an argument. I'm not talking about a you know, just have a conversation. And, yeah, it's and, like it's like we want to be mad more than we want to be we, I guess healed. Well, <laughs> like, yeah. like, Dr. Phil, shout out to him, man. Mm-hmm. Love him to death. Sponsored by Dr. Phil today. Uh you know, he mm-hmm. always says, Do you want to be feeling like a dirt bag? You yeah. like a dirt bag. Do you want to be right or do you want to be happy? Yeah. That he says that, man. And and like whenever I heard that uh, and maybe I'm just getting, I, I am getting softer in my older age. I am, man. And I, I, I'm, I'm, uh, learning how to grow. I feel like spiritually a lot, man, because I, I'm not as, uh, I'm not as, uh, I don't know what I would say, man. I, I've just become softer in my older mm-hmm. days just because the whole drama situation we've been talking about, I, I have no drama. I don't want no drama. I don't want to be around drama. I don't, you know, so like people who try to conjure up something or say something or post something or come at me about something. True story really quick, and I got to say this. Um, we we had a, a there was a, a person um, who uh, cut ties with us um, probably months ago. This was months, months ago. Um and literally, I mean, had been in our home, had hung out with us, had done some stuff, you know, this, that, or the other. Um, and because of a situation, had cut ties with us. Whatever. That's what you want to do, whatever. You know, that's cool. So then this person uh, reaches out uh, and and sends an apology. And I mean a huge apology, like a page long apology, you know. Sorry, uh, you know, uh I was I was listening to stuff that I shouldn't have been listening to, listening to people, blah, 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 so on and so forth. You know, you're you should have never been treated that way. I'm so sorry, blah, blah, blah. So, you know, and and, and so, you know, it's like cool. All right, appreciate it. And and so then it was like my wife was like, well, What do you say to that? And I'm like, uh, I know this may sound harsh, but it's like I lived life while you cut me off, I'm still going to live life even though you apologize. And you know what? There's no hard feelings Mm -hmm. because you know what? Like regardless, and here's the deal. Here's what I've come to understand. People make, people make interactions so weird when they don't have to be. They make them so, um, what's the word I'm, I don't even know. Just blow it out of proportion. Yes. Yes. That yeah. Proportionally they're like, Oh my God, I could never talk to you. I could never see you again. Like, man, Mm -hmm. there's people that's left our church that I literally see out and, and I'll see them in, uh, uh, I'll see them in, in Academy. I'll see them gas stations, whatever. And like, I don't like, I'm at a point in time in my life. I'll make you feel uncomfortable. (laughs) I will walk up to you and be like, What's up? How you doing? I ain't seen you in forever. You know, um, I had a, I just had a guy yesterday I hadn't seen in a while in church, man. You know, whatever the reasoning is is whatever the reasoning is. But did that stop me from going up and being like, yo, what's up? Love you, bro. What's going on? What's happening? How you doing in life? You know, what's going on? Did I say anything about church? Absolutely not. You know, did I say, oh, where you been? And blah, blah, blah. Mm-hmm. Absolutely not. Because here's the deal. You're a grown adult. You can decide if you want to come. If you want to come, hey, doors are open. If you don't want to come, hey, there's 18 million churches out there. Go find one. Be productive. You mm-hmm. know, like that's life. That's how you, that's how you ex nay the drama A. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, worry about you, worry about your family, worry about your stuff. And, and people are going to be mean to you. That's part of it. People are going to be good to you. That's part of it. Like it's life. Life, man, and I just can't get past these people who literally like have to have this drama all the time in their life, twenty four seven, just to survive. Man, yeah, I don't see how they do it. Yeah, it's just like you know, it's like they they need it as like fuel for their bodies. <laughs> it's right, just like yeah. I, I can't. It's like I can't a caffeine addiction, it. Yeah, man, you know? it is, or a Fiji know, addiction, which neither of us have, right? Um, uh, but, but but yeah, I think you know. Again, it's just there's so many people out there. I think that they they, they need that. So they they strive on that. And I think some people, it's all they got. Uh, like they don't know how to have an interesting conversation with somebody without talking bad about somebody else uh like yeah. i think that that's that's a huge thing i think a lot of people have that problem like they don't know how to have a conversation with 
somebody else it's without true. talking bad about somebody else. It's true. Yeah, it's crazy. Ah, <laughs> let me flip this table. Yeah, just, ah, Jesus. Ah, ah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it is. It is true. And you know, I mean, I'm sure there's people listening that 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 is you. Uh, that you know, you you have a hard time talking about talking to other people well, I unless it's to, about somebody else. I used else. to be that person, mm-hmm. and I think that's the reason why maybe I feel passionate about it. For is because I know. Uh, I used to be that person where I was like, man, like I, I would listen, you know, like if you want to talk to me now, I'll sit here and talk to you. I'll listen to you. I'll do whatever. And well, yeah, I mean, you can call me a, a cotton headed ninny muggins. I mean, Gosh. I, you know, Watch I mean, your language. I know. <laughs> right. Uh, the, you know, but at the end of the day, it's like, Hey man, if that's how you feel, that's how you feel. You know, I'm not going to kill myself to, to make you feel any different about me. And people, I think people take so much to heart. People take mm-hmm. people, people take people's words to heart, their posts to heart, you know, everything else. And it's just like, why? Mm-hmm. You know, a uh, good friend of mine said this one time, man, and it really stuck with me. It's like, they can't take your birthday. And that's true. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, you can't take, you can't, you don't write my checks. You don't, you don't, you don't, uh, you know, you don't, you don't celebrate my birthday with me. You don't do that stuff. Like, I don't have to answer to you. So it's mm-hmm. like, why do we let people, places, things, whatever, have so much position and power in our minds when, when we shouldn't? Yeah. I think it's something we all need to, you know, I'd say we all honestly need to get better about doing and yeah. better about, period, is just, right. You know, letting letting go of of things that don't matter and people. True. I mean, cutting off people that don't matter. I mean, and I don't know that may be harsh from a Christian perspective. You know, we're supposed to love everybody and and pray for everybody and bring them into the church. Sometimes you know, true love and, is saying and, no, yep, bro. And I, I think sometimes you know, as, as just as Jesus said, you know, sometimes you're going to have to brush off your sandals and move on. There's too many other people out there yep. that need you, that need the Word of God, that need your love, that need your attention, that need your time. Uh, for you to waste it on people who don't like you, who don't yep. want anything to do with you, who don't want to, to to hear what you have to say, and who are going to hate you for stupid reasons and yep. not want to talk to you for stupid reasons, and you know, yet we we constantly every single day hang on to those people, yep. to the people, and you know, I don't know if maybe our lives are just that boring that we just constantly need the influx of True. excitement and True. you know, and, and battle back and forth, and you know, oh, you know, I, I don't go to that place anymore because so and so works there. I don't, I don't go to that church anymore because so and so goes there. You know, just get over yourself. Right. <laughs> Like the right. love of God, get over it. Uh, you know, I mean, it, it's just there. You don't like you're if you, if you are falling into that time and time again, then you are you're serving that drama instead of God. Yep. You know, you're you're not serving your purpose. You're not living it out in the right way, the right way, the right shape, form, matter, whatever you want to call it. Uh, you are allowing that to, as we've talked about, to distract you, to distance you, and eventually to destroy you. If you hold on to that, if you hold on to grace, I tell kids this all the time, you know, when I'm talking to them about like things they're dealing with and struggling with, I'm like, if you hold on to, because I've been there, yep. if you hold on to that anxiety, if you yep. hold on to that depression, if you hold on to that anger and you just shove it and shove it and shove it down and down and down and you don't talk about it, you don't, t- you know, like it will destroy you. Yep. Uh, it, it will absolutely destroy you to the point of you wanting to carve your wrists, blow your brains out, whatever it may be. Like it will destroy you. And I, I think the enemy uses those things to destroy us. Yep. Once he's destroyed us, you know, if, if he can take us out before we've given our life to Christ, before we've made that decision, if he can take us out and he's clapping, yeah. you know, he's, he's grateful, he's happy. And I think that goes back to what we were saying in the beginning about, you know, the world is already lost to Satan. He doesn't have to worry about the world. Right. The world's going to destroy itself. Yeah. Like, you know, that's filled. The world is filled with people who have listened to the lies of the enemy, who have been distracted, who have been distanced, and who are destroying not only their own lives but other lives as well. True. Uh, and we don't, you know. And, and so we, as Christians, we as people who go to church, who try to read the Bible, who try to pray, who try to worship, who try to do these things that they're supposed to do because it's what God has called them to do. They are the people that the enemy is coming after every single day, every single week, every single month, every single year. He is coming after you because you are his enemy. Absolutely, man. Whew. I don't know if you could tell, but I know we were tired. But I, sound, I felt like we covered a lot of ground. What do you think? Yeah, yeah. I, mean, I feel like we did. Retired man. but energized. Absolutely. Passionate. Well, I guess passionate about saying. what we <laughs> yeah. talk about. Yeah. That's that's the true statement. We're tired but passionate. Absolutely. So again, thank you so much, man, for tuning in for hitting that download button. Hopefully, uh, something said, something's done. Hopefully, you know, there's a way to deal with conflict now. Hopefully, uh, we can take a look on the inside and say, hey, man, this is what I need to get better at. We love you so much. We thank you so much, man. And until we see you again. Be blessed. Even when you feel low, you can still go. Even when you feel slow, you can still go. Even when there's no hope, you can still go. I never answered a no, man, I still go. Go, 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 go. As 
always, this is PKR, and for my sidekick, Nick, we say thank you very much for hitting that download button on People Suck, Love Them Anyways. Be sure to tell a friend, tell a family member to hit that download button as well. And as always, we say thank you. Be blessed. Even when you feel low, you can still go. Even when you feel slow, you can still go. Even when there's no hope, you can still go. I never answered a no, man, I still go. Go, go.